Hey, my name is Xpeke from Team Origin and this is my basic champion guide to Corky mid. The good thing about Corky is that it's a champion that has no really bad matchups. Have been semi AD and semi caster because your Q and your auto attacks give you so much dominance in lane. It doesn't matter what the enemy team picks, you will always be fine in the game. And that makes it a safe pick and also a strong pick for the team because he doesn't only get a lot of pressure in some matchups, but once he gets the package, he's able to scare the whole team pretty much like a twisted fate because the moment you don't see Corky, both, line, both lanes have to stay scared until he's off up in the map again. And that's something that put a lot of pressure without you necessarily having to do a lot for it. The laning phase with Corky is pretty straight straightforward. If you don't have a hard matchup, let's say you're playing against a melee or some mates that cannot really trade with you, you can just start with your Q and push the wave. You will have so much control over the lane if every time he goes for an auto, he's scared of you punishing him with a Q or even a Q auto. Because once you do the Q and you hit it, you will win the trade always. Uh, if it's a harder matchup, maybe like a LeBlanc, in which you are scared of trading because he can outplay you a bit with the W, it's normally where you try to play a bit more passive until she uses or wastes her W. Once she uses it, it's when you try to go hard on her. It's, it's really good if you're confident on Corky because you can always pressure more than with other champions thanks to your W. Your W will always put you on safety range without having to use flash. And if you really play good around this and every time your jungler is near, you just push the turret, you can punish the other guy really, really hard. And it's the same with Corky, it's a bit hard to set up ganks yourself because you don't really have any CC. So it's, it's always better to, to be the one that is having the pressure and then moving with your jungler somewhere else. Team fighting with Corky is a, a lot different than with other mid laners. It's pretty much like playing an AD carry with the difference that you have some poke. What you want to do mostly is stay next to your AD carry because thanks to your E reducing their armor, you can both of you focus the tank at the same time and you will kill him super, super fast. One of the things you also can do with Corky when you are really, really strong into late game is looking for a flank. It's really good if you can maybe jump the enemy carry over a wall and kill him because you will always beat 80 carries 1v1 if you get them by surprise. It's really good that in fights, even though you're hitting the front line or you're not able to hit, you try to hit your with your rockets the back line. They hurt a lot and if you get to hit a big one on an enemy AD carry or AP, you might take like one quarter of their HP out and it's really good if you are doing damage while they are just waiting. Corky ultimate is really special because it's an ultimate that is really spammable and also every third uh, every third rocket becomes a big one. This rocket is really really strong in lane or even in fights because it has way more AoE than the normal rocket which means that you can all even hit the tanks but it also deals extra damage and if by any chance you hit an enemy carry with a big one you will take like one quarter of their HP once you have your sword boots and your triforce. Since the rework Corky has changed not so much but they added a new feature to him. Pretty much is his passive, it's called the package, and at minute 8, at base it responds a package that you can pick up, and every 5 minutes after you drop it. Uh, this package remote is really really strong because it lasts 1 minute, and it gives you like a passive home guard. Every time you're not in fight, you move really really fast around the map, and it also increases your Valkyria range like 5 times the normal range. You can pretty much gank a silent, teleporting almost from Nash or Drake almost to the lane, and it's really really strong. The thing that makes really scared people as well is that when you pick it up, they hear like a noise. So they always be, will be a bit scared in every lane until you show up in the map. Corky doesn't really have any losing matchups, but he does have really some hard matchups. Like uh, I would say Thed and LeBlanc, more, more Thed than LeBlanc though. It's a really hard matchup for Corky because even though early game you are farming equal, maybe even a bit ahead, the moment he gets his level 6, level 7, you have to be really scared because even though you have Valkyria, at any time he ultimates you, he can chase you with his shadow and if he gets to pull a good ultimate ignite on you, he can kill you. And that makes you not play, not play like normally, in a way that normally you have the pressure and in this lane you have to be the one getting pressure since you don't want to risk it going out and getting ultimated by him. The good thing about uh, Corky and Triforce is that the cooldown of the ultimate and the cooldown of Triforce are pretty similar. And it's really good in every fight if instead of just shooting a rocket and then auto attacking to proc the Shin, you can auto attack and then shoot the rocket. The animation of the rocket is so fast that it will proc on the auto attack even though you land it afterwards. For Corky as runes, I use a, a really weird page in which I go for 10% attack speed. For that I get 6 of the red runes attack speed and the other 3 I get them as attack damage. For the queens, I also get full AD on all of them. And for yellows I get HP scaling per level and MR scaling per level. 
The MR rules, it depends. Sometimes you get flat MR, but I only do it if I'm facing a magic jungler like Elise or Gragas and a mid laner that has a lot of damage early like Syndra or LeBlanc. And the reason to get that extra 10% attack speed is mostly because it helps you a lot in the lane to see as a harass at the same time. In the mid lane, it's a lot about trading one or two autos and winning the trade. And if you have a higher attack speed, it can allow you to last hit and harass him instantly really fast when he's going for a CS. For Corky, I always go for 12, 18, 0. You can decide on changing a few things maybe, like uh, instead of Cookie, if you're going to start with the Potion of Corruption, you can start with Assassin instead, since you're never going to get any benefit out of the Cookie. With Corky, you can start Q or E. That depends pretty much on how much you think you're going to harass the other guy. If it's a melee matchup, you can just take E, but I like to start with Q always, because it allows you to farm and harass at the same time and have pressure in lane early. For level 2, I always take Valkyria, because it's really helpful if you get gank or if you want to go on the guy with a gank yourself. It allows you to move faster and it's way safer and it's not worth taking the risk of not taking in level 2. For level 3, I max Q again, and then level 4, I take E. And at that point, I use max Q always, then E, then W. The starting item on Corky is either Flash of Corruption or Dorans and a Cookie. That pretty much depends on how you think your lane is going to play out. If you think it's going to be a lane that is mostly going to be about farming, both far away from each other, you can just go for Doran's Blade, and when you trade one auto, you will win because you will have sustain and an extra damage. If you think it's going to be, the other hand, a lane that is more explosive in which both of you want to fight a lot, let's say like Queen Corky, uh, it's better to, to start with the Flask, because that allows you that every time you take a trade, uh, you just pop the, uh, the pot and trade for a long period of time and you will win. The items I tend to build normally is always Trinity Force first, it's a really strong item on Corky and it gives you everything you need for your packs to be stronger. The, uh, the first item you can buy on your first bag, it can be Sin or Phage. I normally like to buy Phage, if possible, because it gives you better stats. But if you just want to harass in lane and win it hard to take a Sin, it's also viable. After that, I always like to go for Source Boots. Sometimes before finishing the Triforce, sometimes when I finish it, it depends on my base. And after the, having Triforce Source Boots, you are at your strongest point in the game pretty much because it's when you have most of the damage from the rockets and from your atos, so it's when you want to start fighting the most. After that, pretty much, you can go either Rapid Fire Cannon or the Infinity Edge first, and then the other one. And after that, it's just a normal AD carry build in which you can go for BT or for a QSS or for a bit of tankiness if you want a GA or a Banshee. Mall of Mammortius sometimes as well. It's really good if you're against heavy AP team. Thanks for watching this basic champion guide. Make sure to check out some of the rest of the guys over at lolclass.com.